Hey, what's up guys and welcome to part 20 of what if Tsunade was Naruto's mother. Remember to get this one to 100 like as usual. Share it to all of your friends on your social media platform. And on my second channel, I posted a new episode of Uchiha Naruto, The Sage. So go ahead and enjoy that. And after this, I'm going to be posting what if Naruto was trained to be a mercenary. So enjoy that as well. And also, if you're new and this is the first time you're hearing my voice, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and click that red subscribe button and join the anime king family and be a part of the channel. And go ahead and check out my second channel as well, Anime King 2, and enjoy all of the lovely what ifs that are coming your way. So yeah, without further ado, let's get straight into it. Start the intro. You can Last time we left off, we left off with Naruto meeting Gara for the first time. As this time around, a lots of other villages are taking part in the tuning exam. After Naruto finished his whole ordeal with Gara, suddenly he was attacked. As Naruto found out who his attackers were, as he then smiled. So that was basically last part we left off. So let's get straight in this part. And if you haven't yet, switch across the playlist and start from part one if you're new. But if you're all caught up, let's get straight into it. Amoy, said Naruto with a smile as he saw his friend. Good to see you Naruto, said Amoy with his own smile as he was sucking on a lollipop. Amoy hasn't changed at all with the exception of growing a little bit taller as Naruto examined him. As this were going on, Sasuke, Sakura and the kids all got confused look on their face. None of this made sense to them. As one minute, the four unknown shinobis were attacking Naruto and now they are greeting each other like they are old friends. Naruto, who the hell are these people? Asked Sasuke as he still held the kunai in his hand, unsure in what to think of them. Naruto saw that Sasuke still had the kunai out, so he responded. Easy Sasuke, these guys aren't a threat, they are from the Cloud Village. And they are old friends of mine, said Naruto. Friends would be a stretch, given how you lie to us, said Samui. Oh, said Naruto as he rubbed the back of his head. So I guess you guys know about, as he was cut off by Yuji To. Yeah, about you being the son of Tsunade, one of the legendary Sanins and the heir of the Senju clan. Naruto just laughed nervously at Yuji To as the others stared at him. It kinda hard not to. Did you really think that we wouldn't find out for ourselves, said Yuji To. At this Naruto sigh, as he never wanted to lie to them, but he had to back then, as he had no choice, as the secret wasn't known, and he had to think about his family. Tired of not knowing what was going on, Sasuke decided to speak, Senju, why don't you introduce us to your friend here, and tell us why they are here. Alright, sorry, this is Yujito, Amoy, Samui, and Karu, and like I said, they are from the Cloud Village. As Naruto went on to introduce each of his friends, guys, this is Uchiha Sasuke, Haruno Sakura, and Konohamaru, and Moki and Yudan. Are these your teammates, Naruto? asked Amoy. After Naruto introduced Sasuke and the others to them, sort of, I work with them from time to time, but I am not on an official team. As I am under an apprenticeship with another Jonin sensei, Naruto replied. Amoy just nodded. As that confirmed what the Raikage had told them. So, this is Uchiha, said Yujito, as she studied Sasuke. As the Raikage had told them about the Uchiha and the Senju, they even have photo of Sasuke. He's even better looking in person than his photo, thought Karu with a blush. After the introduction was over, Sasuke gave each of them a calculating look as he tried to measure them up. Karu and Amoy did not seem that dangerous or threatening to him, but he still know that they are skilled shinobis given the way they attacked Naruto. But the two that caught his attention the most were Samui and Yujito. Samui stood out to Sasuke as the calm cool emotionless look 
she kept on her face while she stared back at him. The way she looked at him reminded him the same kind of look that Itachi would look at him while Yujito stood out to him because the same familiar sense of feeling when he was around Gara. The both of them have the same presence about them. She did not have a crazy dark look around her like Gara had but it was the same power. When Sakura saw Sasuke staring at Yujito and Samui, she took it the wrong way, thinking that he's attracted to blonde girls. Oh no, Sasuke is eyeing those girls, is he interested in them? Does he prefer blondes or girls with big chests, she thought. As Sakura started to compare her chest size to Samui and Yujito, knowing that she was nowhere able to compare with those two, Sakura then spoke up, so, are you guys here for the tuning exam as well? Trying to get Sasuke to stop focusing on them. Yeah we are, replied Yujito. As Yujito turned back to Naruto, I assume that you will be entering the exam as well Naruto, Yujito asked. Maybe, said Naruto, as he was unsure if his senseis has recommended him for the exam. So where's Killer B, Naruto asked. Sensei is at the office signing us up for the tuning exam, Answer Yujito, where Naruto nodded as he was about to ask another question. Before he did, Samui spoke. Although I am sure you have many questions for us Naruto, we have questions for you as well. As she gave him a serious look that told Naruto she wanted answers. Naruto also saw this look in Yujito and the others, as he knew that he had a lot to explain to his friends and they deserve to know the truth. But this wasn't the place he wanted to tell them, especially in front of Sasuke and the others. Fine, said Naruto, but not here. I will explain everything, back at my apartment. Hearing this, Yujito and the others nodded, where Naruto said goodbye to the others and then jumped away, with Yujito and her team following behind him, leaving Sasuke, Konohamaru and Sakura. In a nearby tree, Three sound shinobis watch the events with Gara and Naruto. Once Naruto left with Yujito on her team, the three sound shinobis watched as Sasuke and Sakura went off to meet with their senses, as Konohamaru and their gang went off in different directions. When everyone has left, one of the male members spoke. So, said Zaku, that is the son of Tsunade and that is the heir of the Uchiha clan. What do you think of them Dosu? Zaku asks. The blonde hair boy has some skills and I admit that the black hair boy isn't bad as well. But we must also keep an eye on the red hair boy with the gourd on his back, said Dosu. He might be troublesome. On a rooftop, Sai waited for his ink bird to return back to him as it was listening to the whole conversation and everything that happened with Naruto and Sasuke and Gara. Once the bird returned to him, it then sank into a blank scroll as he got all of the information what just happened. When Sai read it, his left eyebrow rose as he was interested that Naruto were friends with people from the cloud. Interesting, Danzo will want to know this, said Sai as he was going to inform Danzo after he met with Kakashi and his team. Back at Naruto apartment. After about 10 minutes, Naruto, Yujito and her team arrived at Naruto apartment. Nice place here Naruto, spoke Amoy as he entered the apartment and started to look around. Thank you, Naruto replied, as he led the cloud ninjas in to the living room, where Amoy, Samui and Karu all sat on the large couch, while Yujito sat in the chair as Naruto sat on the other chair. I guess I should explain myself now, said Naruto as everyone sit down. Yes you should, stated Yujito. Look guys, I didn't want to lie to you, but if I had told you the truth, I would have put my family in danger, said Naruto as he heard Karu scoff. What, you don't believe me Karu? asked Naruto as he was not surprised that Karu didn't believe him. No I don't, she replied. Well, it's the truth, said Naruto. Please, you actually want us to believe that you had no choice but to lie to us. Yes, because it is the truth, answered Naruto. Hold on Karu, I think that Naruto is telling the truth, said Amoy. 
Oh please, that is what you said the last time. And he was actually lying to us. What is stopping from lying now? Well this time I am certain, replied Amoy, which gained everyone attention. Think about it, no one knew that Snavi had a son and Naruto was that son. As no one had ever seen or heard anything about him for 12 years, he was just released recently. Meaning that they were in hiding with Naruto while she was raising him. Since he would be the heir of the Senju clan and Snavi's son, a lot of enemies of hers will go after him. At hearing this Naruto smile as he was glad that Amoy understood as he really did not want to lose his friendship with Yujito and the others. Although that is true, he still could have trusted us enough because we didn't tell his secret or report him to the Raikage, said Samui. Upon hearing this, Naruto was surprised as he turned to Yujito. Is that true? Yes, said Yujito with a nod. Killer B Sensei, believe it best to keep our first meeting with you a secret from the Raikage. As he believed, if there was a young boy capable of defeating me when I used the two-tailed power and also possessed four nature's affinities, naturally the Raikage would have sent Shinobi to track you down, capture you or kill you to prevent you from becoming a threat to our village. At hearing this, Naruto was surprised as he didn't think that Yujito and the others would like their leader to protect him from their village. Guys look. I feel really bad for lying to you, I am grateful that you stuck your neck out for me, but I couldn't risk it that you will inform the Raikage about me, said Naruto, as I didn't want to put you in a situation where you will have to choose loyalty for your village or your friendship with me, since if you guys knew who I were but then would you have really kept my identity from the Raikage? At this. Neither Yujito or the other spoke, since they all know that Naruto was telling the truth. As if they know who Naruto was at the time, they would be obligated as Shinobi as their village to report this. But still, Karu scoff. When Naruto heard Karu scoff, he turned and looked at her, as he knew that she still had some kind of grudge against him. As out of all of them, she never fully trusts him. Is there a problem Karu? asked Naruto. Yeah there is, because I don't trust you. You may have got the others to believe your sob story, but I don't trust you one bit. You're still a dog of Konoha, she said. At hearing this, Naruto frowned as he stood up in anger. As he was an easy going person, but there was still things that he wouldn't stand for. As he would not stand for someone insulting his village, since if they insulted his village, they would be insulting him as his ancestors were the one who created this village and she was disgracing the sacrifice that his father did to protect Konoha and he also would not stand for she calling him a dog. Look Karu, I know that you didn't like me or trust me but I suggest that you get over it. I defeated you and that's that as I won't stand for you or anyone else insulting my village said Naruto angrily. Karu also became angry as she stood up and glared at Naruto. The fact that I never trusted you as I was right all along you were in fact with another village. Just like I said said Karu as she glared at Naruto hard. But she didn't want to admit to the others that she still held the grudge because Naruto defeated her and tied her up in the tree and she was insulted. And also what happened earlier on when they met Naruto in the street. If you expect me to be sorry for lying to you and the others Karu, well I hate to disappoint you but I'm not because I did what I had to do to protect my family, Naruto said as he raised his voice. Since you all know well as I do that if I had told you the truth back then you would have been obligated to tell the Raikage and you would have hunted both me and my family down. Also, I was not with Konoha when I met you guys. I joined Konoha 6 months ago as I was traveling with my mother for all of my life back then. She doesn't even know about you guys either because I haven't tell anyone about our meeting, responded Naruto. After Naruto said this, an intense steering match began with him and Karu as the both of them stared at each other intensely. 
Seeing that things are really heating up, Amoy became concerned. Oh man, things are really getting heated up. What if a fight breaks out between the two of them? What if I had to force to fight Naruto? I really don't want to fight a friend. Okay guys, I think the both of you should step back and calm down because there is no need for you guys to go overboard, especially you Karu. As we're not here to start a fight, Amoy spoke as he got between the both of them. Stay out of this Amoy, this is between him and me, she said as she still stared angrily at Naruto. As she clicked her katana open, ready to draw it out and fight. Seeing this, Naruto clicked his own katana. I suggest you think carefully of what you're about to do, he said in a dark tone, because this time, I won't hold back like last time. Before anyone could say anything or do anything, a new voice, female, spoke up. I suggest that you do what he says, girly. Upon hearing this new voice, the five quickly turned around as two blurs flashed through the window on their right hand side. After which, Yamato and Kushina appear right next to Naruto. Naturally, upon seeing the Jonin senses, the four Cloud Ninja became concerned, especially on seeing Kushina, who was well known for being a powerful and skilled Konoichi, and she was also well known for her strong dislike of the Cloud. Damn it, it's her, thought Samui with some worry as she noticed Kushina from the bingo books. Damn it, thought Karu as she knew that this was trouble. Crap, nice going Karu, thought Amoy. This is not good, thought Yujito as she silently cursed her luck. Why does this have to happen? They just came here to participate in the tuning exams. Kushina sensei, Yamato sensei. What are you doing here? Naruto asks his two senses. We came here looking for you, as you were supposed to meet us at the training ground half an hour ago, Kushina answered, as Naruto forgot about it. He was on his way when the whole thing with Gara, and now this happened. But don't worry about that, you care to tell us what is happening right here Naruto? Kushina asks. Naruto sighed as he had no other choice but to tell the truth. For the next half hour, Naruto explained how he knew Yujito and the others as when he finished, both Yamato and Kushina had slight frown on their faces. Naruto, you know that you should have not hidden this from us, said Yamato as he stared at the four cloud Jennings. I am sorry sensei but if I had told you, you would have told Gigi and then he would have told my mom and she would have blown the whole thing out of proportion. Since I didn't tell any of them who I really was, and they only found out for themselves, said Naruto. Is this true? asked Yamato as he stared at Yujito and the others, as they all nodded. Then if this is true and you are all such good friends, why is it that you are ready to attack Naruto? spoke Kushina with a serious tone as she stared at the four of them. But she mainly turned her focus to Karu as she was the one who looked like she was ready to attack Naruto. Before Karu could say anything, Yujito spoke. I am sorry for my teammate, as when we met Naruto, we only wanted him to explain why he lied to us. But my teammate Karu had some mixed feelings about Naruto. And do any of you else have any mixed issues with Naruto? Asked Kushina. No, we don't have any issues, replied Yujito truthfully. Where both Samui and Amoy nodded, as they understand why Naruto lied to them. But Karu was the only one who was still stuck up. Good, now if you don't mind, we would like to talk to our student in private, said Kushina in an emotionless tone as she still didn't trust any of them. As they all took this as the opportunity left, as they were about to leave Naruto called out to them, as they turned and faced him. I know that lying to you wasn't the best way to start a friendship, but I hope that we're still friends. At this Karu scoff, but before she could make a comment, Yujito spoke. Perhaps after the exam has ended, but until then, we're your enemies. And I suggest when we face each other again, you not hold back because we will not. As Naruto nodded in understanding, with a smile on his face. As Amoy gave him a nod, Samui did as well, as they all left the apartment. After discussing the matter with him for a few minutes, 
Kushina and Yamata told him that they would have to tell the Hokage about this because he needed to know. Naruto of course understand but he knows that when his mother returned back to Konoha, she will get angry after knowing that he met with foreign shinobis and didn't tell her anything about it. After that was finished, so why exactly did you guys want to talk to me? Naruto asked the both of them. The reason we called you because we wanted to give you this, said Yamato as he handed Naruto application for the Chunin exam. When Naruto saw this he smiled as he finally had the opportunity to show everyone that he was more than the son of Tsunade. But as he was getting excited, he then realized something. But wait, senseis, how can I enter the tuning exam? I need a team and I don't have one. You will be placed on a team and work with them, replied Kushina. Which team will that be? asked Naruto. Well, given how well you and Team 7 handle your mission in the wave, you will be working with them during the tuning exams. Upon hearing this, Naruto groaned a little as he hoped that he would be working with someone else this time, Team 8 or Team 10. Why did it have to be Team 7? Naruto got over it as he signed the application as Yamato took it and told him that he will be meeting up with Team 7 in 3 days time where they will be taking the first part of the tuning exams. Naruto nodded as he told his two senseis that he wants some extra training before the exam after seeing Gara and seeing Yujito and her team again, knowing that they must have gotten stronger, he wanted to push his skills before he entered the exams. And with that they headed towards the training ground. Time skip, 3 days later, after meeting up with Team 7 outside of the academy, Naruto and Team 7 headed inside to the academy room. As they walk up to the second floor, they saw a large crowd gathered on the second floor. As they got close, they saw a boy in a green outfit that was being pushed back by two Jennings that were blocking the door. You're actually trying to take the tuning exam at your level. Kid, trust me, go home, said one of the Jennings. You kid should run along as you won't last in the tuning exam, said the other. Please just let us through, said Ten Ten as she held back up Lee as she tried to get past only to be pushed back by one of the boys. We are doing you all a favor by keeping you from taking this exam as we saw people get really injured and killed during the tuning exams. That's a pretty sound argument but I'll pass, said Sasuke. Also undo this field that you created by using Genjutsu because I want to go to the third floor where the exam is really being held as murmurs could be heard in the crowd as they didn't understand what Sasuke was talking about. Oh, so he noticed, thought Naruto as he looked at Sasuke. Sai had also noticed the weak Genjutsu, but he didn't say anything, didn't want to draw attention to himself like Naruto. So you notice, said the genin at the door, but noticing will not help you as he rushed towards Sasuke, appearing to kick him. Sasuke bring up his own leg to stop the kick when Lee appeared in the middle of both of them and grabbed their legs. He's fast, said Naruto as he just noticed Lee. As Sasuke looked at Lee, as he realized that Lee was making those guys push him around earlier because he was hiding his true skills, making everyone underestimate him. But Sasuke was still shocked that Lee managed to stop his kick with such ease. Lee then let go of Sasuke and the other boy as his two teammates walked up to him. You broke our promise, said Neji as he came up to Lee with Tenten. You were the one who said that you didn't want to do something that gained people attention but yet you do this. I am sorry, said Lee as he then turned to Sakura and blushed a little. Upon seeing this, Neji scoffed as he figured Lee did that to impress that girl. After being scolded by Neji, Lee then walked up to Sakura. My name is Rock Lee. Let's go out together, I will protect you until the day I die, said Lee. Upon hearing this, Naruto had the bite down hard to keep in all the laughter as he saw the look on Sakura's face after Lee just said that. Thankfully though, Sakura let him down easily as she stated that Lee was too unique for her taste. Lee then went depressed, but it was still better than what Naruto thought that Sakura would say to him. Hey there. 
spoke Neji as he walked up to Team 7 and looked at Sasuke. Identify yourself. You're supposed to introduce yourself first before asking for someone's name, said Sasuke as he looked back at Neji. Neji of course frowned at Sasuke's remark. You're a rookie aren't you? What age are you? I am not obligated to answer that, answered Sasuke. Tintin of course giggled at this, because it wasn't every day someone would meet Neji so frazzled. As she looked at Sasuke, he is cute, she thought. Neji then moved forward, but he then stopped as Naruto walked between him and Sasuke. Easy there, white eyes. No need to start something that you can't handle. And who are you? asked Neji as he stared at Naruto. His teammate and the person that know that we don't have time to play around. At hearing this, Neji frowned a little, but he knew that the kid was right as they didn't have time to waste here as he just turned and looked towards Tintin and Lee and said let's go come on guys let's go said Naruto as him and the others went to the third floor as they headed to the third floor Sasuke looked at Naruto you didn't need to interfere Naruto I could have handled him better safe than sorry because we don't have time to waste said Naruto as Sasuke just nodded Come on Lee, let's go, said Tintin as Neji already walked off. You guys go ahead, I have to deal with something, I will catch up with you guys soon, said Lee as he turned to the direction where Naruto and Team 7 headed off to. Tintin just sighed as she headed behind Neji. When Team 7 headed up the floor, they entered a large hallway where Lee called out to them. Naruto and the others turned around. You, said Lee as he gestured towards Sasuke. What is it? Sasuke said. Will you fight me here and now? Asked Lee as he looked at Sasuke. Upon hearing this, Sasuke raised an eyebrow as he didn't know whether to accept Lee's match or not. But he then remembered when Lee caught his kick so easily earlier. Fine, I accept, said Sasuke with a smirk as he was eager to have another go at Lee. We don't have time for stuff like this, said Naruto. Don't worry Naruto, it won't take long said Sasuke with a small smirk as he then charged at Lee. I am sorry guys sensei but I fear that I must break my promise and use that move, said Lee as he saw Sasuke charging at him. Lee simply dodged Sasuke's fist as he then vanished in the blink of an eye. As he came down, Lee whirlwind he said as Sasuke managed to block. Lee then flicked around another kick as Sasuke brought up his guard to block Lee, but Lee ran right through his defenses and sucked him right in the face, sending Sasuke flying back. Oh, he's good with Taijutsu, thought Naruto, while Sakura and Sasuke were dumbfronted as they saw that Sasuke brought up his guard. As Sasuke didn't understand himself, how was he able to go through my defenses like that? While Sai stood there, as he knew the basics of Taijutsu, and he knew that Lee was able to perform Taijutsu well. I guess this is the best time to use this, said Sasuke as he activated the Sharingan. With these eyes, I cannot lose. About 5 minutes later, Sasuke was up in the air as Lee was preparing to tie him up with the bandages. Stop right there, Lee, said a voice, as everyone saw a large turtle as Lee composed himself and dropped back on the ground as Sasuke landed on his feet as he couldn't believe that the fight went like that even with his Sharingan he was nowhere near this guy's level and this guy was only using Taijutsu as he knew that he's still too weak to face off against Itachi. With that the large turtle scolded Lee as Team 7 headed off where they were going. As they finally made it at the double door as they entered, as they saw a whole bunch of Jennings, as Sakura was getting really nervous as they were staring at them. But this was come to a halt when someone shouted, Naruto, you're late. As the blonde girl quickly jumped on Naruto back and hugged him tightly, as everyone then turned to see that it was Ino. I have been waiting for you, Naruto, ever since I heard that you were going to take part in the tuning exam as I haven't seen you in ages. Ino, we saw each other two days ago, but that is still too long Naruto, said Ino as she hugged him tighter. Ino, get off Naruto as he's on our team 
and I won't stand for you sabotaging our team, said Sakura. As if I would do anything to Naruto, you're just jealous that I'm closer to Naruto than you are with Sasuke. Not to mention that Naruto is way cuter than Sasuke, said Ino as she let go of Naruto. No way, Sasuke is a hundred times cuter than Naruto. As the two girls started to argue which one was cuter, as the two boys were simply annoyed. Don't tell me that you guys are also going to take this troubling exam too, said Shikamaru as him and Choji walked up. Hey Shikamaru, hey Choji. So, you guys are participating as well, said Naruto. So, you guys are doing the exam as well, spoke a new voice as all of them turned around to see Hinata, Shino and Kiba. Upon seeing Hinata, Naruto gave her a friendly smile and a wave like he always would. She blushed bright red and stuttered out a nervous hello while she did the thing with her fingers. Ino then came up to Naruto as she wrapped her arm around his right arm. Naruto just gave up as Kiba then noticed Sai. Who are you? You don't look like much. As Sakura then spoke, he's a new member of our team. Well, you don't look like much either, with that flea bag on your head, said Sai with a fake smile. What? cried Kiba as he took a step to attack as Akamaru growled. As all of them stopped as a voice spoke up. But guys, I'm going to be ending this episode right here. If you want to see the next part of this or know what to do, like, subscribe, comment down below and turn on that bell notification to stay posted. Remember to share to all of your friends on your social media platform and also I'm going to be posting what if Naruto was trained to be a mercenary after this. So remember to stay in tune and enjoy all the what ifs that are coming your way. But for now, I'm out. Peace.